Hey folks, so I just wanted to give everybody an update on uh, that little barometric pressure data logger project that uh, I shared with you folks a couple weeks ago. Uh, at that moment, I basically kind of had a prototype working to uh, make sure that I could talk to the little uh, Bosch sensor. Uh, the one that I demoed last time was actually a BME280, which measures pressure, temperature, and humidity. In this case, I'm actually using the BMP280, which just does uh, pressure and temperature. And the reason for the change is, for one, all I need for my project is uh, barometric pressure. Um, so I decided to go with this chip. And uh, to be perfectly honest with everybody, um, I, when I was uh, wiring this up to the proto board, I made a mistake with, uh, with one of my wires and I fried the other chip. So uh, this was the quickest chip that I could get, uh, specifically the BMP280 on short notice, uh, which I had to purchase because uh, the deadline for the project was coming up. So let's start with a description of the box. Um, this is a little enclosure that I picked up on Amazon for uh, $19. The thing I liked about this uh, box is that unlike others, this one came with uh, a little plate on the bottom that I could mount my electronics to. So that made it kind of handy. Uh, in other cases, I've had to purchase or make that plate separately. So considering that this was included, I decided to go with this one. This box does have a little rubber gasket that runs along the inside of the lid, which when closed and sealed should help to keep things dry. Um, but I'll talk more about that in a second. Next, let's talk briefly about the electronics. So basically what I've got is a 10 watt solar panel. This was probably over-engineered for, uh, for our conditions here in Arizona. Uh, but it works fine. Uh, the, the reason I went with this larger solar panel is that it gave me an opportunity to create something that would shade the box when it's uh, mounted on a uh, on a tree limb or a branch. So <clears throat> 10 watts is definitely more than I need. That's a Voltaic Systems 10 watt solar panel. So that solar panel is maintaining a charge on this little 2500 milliamp hour um, LiPo battery via that little solar LiPo charger that I picked up from Adafruit. Um, that little 2,500 milliamp hour battery so far has been running this whole setup for three days in the dark, which means that there's been no uh, topping off of the uh, voltage on the battery via the, via the solar panel, um, which just, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because the current draw on this uh, circuit is so small. So that's really encouraging. That tells me that um, I can probably go three or four days uh, without any sunlight and uh, I'm not gonna lose any data. Uh, out here in Arizona, that's not gonna be uh, really something that I need to worry about, but maybe it's an issue where you live. Next, let's talk briefly about how I mounted the solar panel onto the box. You can see that I have a couple nuts and bolts that are holding that little ram mount onto the box. And then the larger part of the ram mount is JB welded onto the back of this solar panel. The bolts used to uh, mount the RAM mount to the enclosure were picked up at Ace Hardware. And I'll include uh, the item number in the description of the video. And the size, of course. I'm gonna put some wraparound conduit uh, to keep the rodents from uh, chewing on this uh, red cable, which might be attractive to rats. And of course, I'll have some silica gel in there as well to keep things dry inside the box. The wire is coming off the solar panel it's fed through the bottom of the box, so that protects um, the box from, uh, from precipitation by having it on the bottom versus the top. And I went ahead and I zip tied that cable into the, uh, onto the box, and that'll keep it from basically pulling out of the solar LiPo charger uh, should uh, uh, that be an issue when, uh, when my colleagues are mounting this in the field and they're adjusting the panel just makes it a lot harder for things to come undone if it's a zip tied in place. So I've got a couple holes in a zip tie that help with that. Uh, what else? Uh, so you might have noticed that I don't have any kind of watertight fitting for this cable right here going into the box. I try to avoid, uh, after, <laughs> after having uh, retrieved some damaged electronics from the field, I quickly learned that uh, silica gel in a, uh, in a totally hermetically sealed box doesn't always work. 
uh, humidity will get into the box and uh, when you get a temperature change when things um, warm and cool and warm that humidity tends to uh, condense out on the electronics it doesn't have anywhere to go or it's a lot harder for the humidity to exit the box if you don't have something like that to let the um, to let the moisture out so i don't make these boxes airtight anymore um, and that uh, helps a little bit more with the sustainability of the deployment over time I've also got this little jack that I picked up from Adafruit that goes from the barrel output on the solar panel to the barrel input on the solar LiPo uh, charger. And I'll include a link in the description of the video for that. In the past, I've actually cut the barrel jack off and soldered it uh, to the solar LiPo charger. Um, but that's kind of sketchy. It's, you know, if you want to recycle the parts or reuse the parts, it just makes things a little bit more difficult. I prefer using these this little uh, barrel jack adapter for this purpose. So, what else have we got in here? Um, I've got this little RTC PFC 8523 chip that's uh, helping me timestamp my data. I've got a Bosch BMP 280 sensor. Uh, I'll include code for uh, for working with both the BME and the BMP 280 in a future video. Uh, but uh, for the purposes of this deployment, uh, pressure is all I really need. And you'll also notice that I no longer have an OLED mounted on the uh, Ada logger. I removed the OLED because it really wasn't necessary. Um, uh, you know, all I need to do is basically have uh, LED 13 flash red when data is written to the SD card. And that's uh, uh, basically confirmation that things are working as they should be working. Uh, so I'll write that in the standard operating procedure for using this box, and that saves on current draw. Uh, you know, and it also cuts down on cost. Those little OLED screens cost like 15 bucks now for the feather form factor for something that, uh, that just isn't really needed. If I need to check uh, the data in the field, I can always remove that little SD card, plug it into my laptop, and make sure that it's, um, make sure that it's writing uh, data accordingly. I've got this, and you can just see the red light just came on, which indicates that data was written to the um, to the SD card. I also have this little um, uh, JST breakout, which makes wiring the solar lipo to the um, to the proto board a little bit more modular, a little bit easier to do. So I'm not soldering uh, if I need to uh, replace anything or if I want to reuse the parts. And what else? I've got this little on-off switch. It'll shut things down and then turn things back on. So that thing makes uh, the whole setup a little bit more user-friendly for my customer. And Velcro is being used to attach the battery to the side of the box. What else can I tell you about uh, this box before it goes out into the field? Oh, so the original box came with, um, with plastic clamps. I don't want anything to be made out of plastic that's going to be load-bearing in the field, so I replace those with these little metal straps, uh, which can then be used with some zip ties for attaching the box to a tree. Uh, so that pretty much does it for the build. Um, if I were to do this over again, I probably wouldn't have gone with such a large solar panel. I mean, it was only an extra 20 bucks. Uh, for the next size up and the reason I went with the larger panel is I figured it would provide some nice shade for the box but 10 watts uh, to keep a charge on that little 2500 milliamp hour battery for a circuit that draws such a small amount of current is certainly over engineered to say uh, to, to put it nicely um, I probably could have gone with a solar panel that was half this size at least for our conditions in Arizona and I would have been just fine uh, but there's nothing wrong with things being a little over-engineered, uh, you know, to ensure sustainability for, for those black swan events. Uh, when the voltage on that battery goes down, this thing just pops it right back up really quick. So it doesn't take a lot of sunlight to, to bring the voltage on that battery up when, when it's needed. These are new solar panels from Voltaic Systems. I guess uh, they were having trouble getting parts for uh, those uh, glossy um, solar panels that I'm more familiar with. But this really does look like a quality panel to me. Like it's going to hold up very well to the elements. Um, at least, you know, visually it looks like uh, it's, it's hardened pretty well for UV resistance and uh, temperature and moisture. So I'm not too concerned about them uh, changing the form factor on that. 
So that's basically it for the build. Uh, I'll go over the, the programming and the wiring for this circuit in a future video, but I just wanted to share this before it gets deployed in the field where I won't have access to it anymore. It's probably less than $200 to build the whole thing with parts purchased from Adafruit. Uh, half of the cost, or close to half of the cost, was uh, associated with the $78 uh, solar panel. The wiring and the programming for this little circuit is, uh, is fairly trivial. All the programs have already been written and Adafruit, as always, does an amazing job of making uh, the code available and explaining it in clear terms. I did have some challenges uh, with the address on that little uh, BMP280 sensor. I'll talk about that uh, in a future video and I'm talking specifically about the I2C address. Uh, both the RTC PFC 8523 as well as that little Bosch BMP280 uh, talk over I2C, so the wiring is fairly trivial. It's just two wires going to the SCL and SDA pins coming off of uh, both sensors. So that makes things really easy. This is a super simple um, setup. I'll talk about that in more depth in a future video, but I just wanted to share what we had to date before it disappears into the field. Subscribe for updates. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching.